866-762-9238. That's 866-762-9238. You can also go to their website at www.enerfood.com. That's E-N-E-R-F like Frank, O-O-D like dog, dot com. Enerfood.com. A big thank you to all of our listeners already taking the products that Enter Health offers. We truly appreciate it. We thank you for your support and encourage you to listen often to stay informed during these crucial times. And I saw when the Lamb opened one of the seals, and I heard as it were the noise of thunder, one of the four beasts saying, Come and see. And I saw, and behold, a white horse, and he that sat on him had a bow, and a crown was given unto him, and he went forth, conquering and to conquer. And when he had opened the second seal, I heard the second beast say, Come and see. And there went out another horse that was red, and power was given to him that sat thereon to take peace from the earth, and that they should kill one another, and that there was given unto him a great sword. And when he had opened the third seal, I heard the third beast say, Come and see. And I beheld, and lo, a black horse, and he that sat on him had a pair of balances in his hand. And I heard a voice in the midst of the four beasts say, A measure of wheat for a penny, and three measures of barley for a penny, and see, thou hurt not the oil and the wine. And when he had opened the fourth seal, I heard the voice of the fourth beast say, Come and see. And I looked, and behold, the pale horse, and his name that sat on him was death. And hell followed with him, and power was given unto them over the fourth part of the earth, to kill with sword and with hunger and with death and with the beasts of the earth. And when he had opened the fifth seal, I saw under the altar the souls of them that were slain for the word of God and for the testimony which they held. And they cried with a loud voice, saying, How long, O Lord, holy and true, dost thou not judge? and avenge our blood on them that dwell on the earth. And white robes were given unto every one of them. And it was sent unto them that they should rest yet for a little season until their fellow servants also and their brethren that should be killed as they were should be fulfilled. And I beheld when he had opened the sixth seal and lo, there was a great earthquake, and the sun became black as sackcloth of hair, and the moon became as blood, and the stars of heaven fell unto the earth, even as a fig tree casteth her untimely figs. And when she is shaken of a mighty wind, and heaven departed, and as a scroll, and when it rolled together, and every mountain and island were moved out of their places, and the kings of the earth, and the great men, the rich men, and the chief captains, and the mighty men, and every bondsman, and every freeman hid themselves in the dens, and in the rocks of the mountains, and said to the mountains and rocks, Fall on us, and hide us from the face of him that sitteth on the throne, and from the wrath of the Lamb, for the great day of his wrath is come, and who shall be able to stand? Oh, ladies and gentlemen, you think there's not going to be some rocking and rolling and some wild stuff? It's just getting started. You haven't seen anything yet, but you're now starting to see it, are you not? Are you not having any problem talking to anybody? Are they now still not seeing if they do not, then they're under strong delusion and cease. Just like the Lord said in the parable of the, of the virgins, Matthew 25. They come to the door after the door's already been shut. They want to knock on the door. And he said, I know you not. I know you not. They said, Lord, Lord, let us in. I know you not. You see, you've already spent too much of your time trying to convince the dummies 
And those that are under strong delusion are just that. They're under strong delusion. And who is the author of that delusion? You see, it's not always about the logic and you presenting the logic. If you can't present the logic, you've tried the emotion and the passion to let them know. But if it still is off or not, then know them not. And go and seek counsel and fellowship with those who do know what you're talking about. And you see, everybody who's listening to this program, or a large number of you, are going to be the leader, going to be the chieftain in that area you're at for the Lord. And you'll have different functions. Not everybody will fight. Not everybody will uh, be able to, uh, you know, teach or preach. Not everybody will be able to do anything. Some people will be able to do medical things and cook and heal people and, and have medical supplies ready. The logistics factor of transportation, of having enough food. If somebody was, you know, wealthy out there and had plenty of, of, of money, you know, or just even a little bit, just buy extra food, you know, for yourself and for some to share. Get one to show and one to go. You know what I'm saying? Just like that. And do the best you can. But the thing is, this is going to become extremely physical. And although we wrestle against principalities, I understand all of that. But when those principalities manifest themselves through this dimension and on this plane, and then I just go to the words of the Lord Jesus, which if you do so, you never are wrong because he told you the truth. And he said, for then shall be great tribulation such as was not since the beginning of the world to this time and no ever shall be. And except those days should be shortened, there should no flesh be saved. But for the elect's sake, those days shall be shortened. He doesn't say to you, Oh, that's going to be over in 10 or 15 minutes, does he? I know some people have got that all, you know, ginned up in their mind. Well, you know, I'm just going to sit right here because I'm protected. There will be sanctuary for those who ask for it and who can and when the Lord will provide it to you. But it may not just be like you're going to check into the Marriott Marquis or, or into the Holiday Inn or even the old Motel 6. It may be a hollow tree. It may be a, a small cave at the base of a cliff. It might be just a cleft in the rock where you can get in there, but there is water nearby. And you can put a tarp over your head and cover it from the rain or from the ashes and the fire and the, and the dust that's falling, whatever it is. The thing is, ladies and gentlemen, is that this is not all going to be just a video game. As Lucifer's minions have moved into this dimension, we've talked about how the veil's being thin and the, the, that there, as they move back and forth in this dimension and things that are in those dimensions come into this time and space, you're going to see things here that you will never believe. And you can just look in Revelation. You can look at Matthew 24. You can look at Luke 21. You can see it in Daniel. You can see all of these different ideas about what the Lord told you is coming. And that's what you need to pay attention to. And then I will put it to you this way. If the Lord Jesus needs me to do something, he's going to place me or anybody else that he needs in the proper position to work for him. If you are of a mind to work for the Lord, which I surely am, I want to be as obedient to the Lord Jesus as I possibly can, because in that is my only protection and salvation now, particularly when they've come for me so many times. But I am not afraid because I have the Lord Jesus on my side, but that does not mean that I might not lose this life, this body of mine might be shuffled off or killed off. What it does mean is that I believe on him and he is my savior and I will have everlasting life in heaven with him. 
But I would hope even then that he would use me at that point and put some old angel combat boots on or junior combat boots, whatever they call them up there, and put me into a boot camp and get me privied up to come back and fight these suckers and all these screaming memes from hell and throw them into the fiery lake or help. You see, you're not going to always get out of it alive because, you, as he said, except those days should be shortened, there should no flesh be saved. That means nobody would be alive on the planet. But since it's been shortened, there will be some who are. So the trick is, as he said previously in Matthew 24, But he that shall endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. So look up the word endure. Should we do that? Is it that hard or is that difficult for us? I mean, I don't know. Maybe we should do that. I've got an old dictionary here, an old uh, American Heritage Dictionary. Let's see if it's got endure in here. It'll just take me just a moment to find it because I did not have it really at the at the ready. Because I generally, ladies and gentlemen, just pray before I come on the air, and I have assemblies, uh, you know, stories assembled and different items. But I ask the Lord to tell me what what it is that He'd like for you to hear, and then I ask Him to flow that out through me if, if any way and put the words in my mouth. Here we go. We're in the ease now. Anyway, let's see here. Endure. Let's just take a moment and let's look at the word endure. Because I think it might just be very illustrative, you know. Endure. Uh, let's see. E-N-D-E. -E. Let's see where we're at. They make this print smaller than I recall. Endure. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. more seconds and we'll find it. Well, there's endomorphic so we're getting close. All right. Endure. Here we go. Endure. To carry on through despite hardships. Undergo. To endure in Arctic winter. Definition two, to bear with tolerance, put up with. They were too free-minded to endure command. One, to continue in existence. This is, um, this is another definition. Two, to suffer patiently without yielding, persevere, hold out. Well, that's quite interesting, isn't it? To suffer patiently without yielding, to persevere and hold out. Well, when they make you to swear obedience, which, from what I understand, the Joker Tut said that May 1st was the day of obedience. You had to show obedience to all the minions. You had to show obedience to him. So when they ask you for obedience, is that worshiping and taking the mark and then worshiping the you know, the beast himself, I don't know. It's very close to seeming like that in times. To continue in existence, to remain the last. I like all of those definitions because that strikes my fancy as to who you guys are out there because I know there's some tough son of a guns out there. People have had it all thrown at them. People have been up, down, sideways, crisscrossed, and had the deuce of spades coming at them at 150 miles an hour, and you stood in the gap and held the fight. Now, some have lost their lives. Our good friend, Sue Bradley, the greatest researcher in the entire world, bar none, and a strong woman. She lost her body, but she's in heaven, ladies and gentlemen. I talked about her last night. I can't help talk about her now. Because after I heard that she passed, I had the most peaceful feeling come over me. And it was almost like it was saying, Sue, Hawk says, Hawk, or Sue was saying, Hawk, it's great. I'm here. I made it. 
I'm without pain. I have no sickness, no illness, no travail. It is beautiful. And that's the spirit that came into me and that I felt, you know, wash over me. And I knew it was her because it was directly narrated for me just hearing. And to Kim and Sabine and, and Romy and all the people that knew her so well. My golly, I mean, she's there. So she is a, just another reminder of our promise that when we believe in the Lord Jesus, we repent of our sins and ask him to come into our heart to be our Savior, that he promises us everlasting life. But he doesn't say everybody gets to sit in the chair, stay out of the fight, watch it on a video screen. Oh, no. He wants you to get in the fight and get in the fight against evil and to stand against it and to stand for him. And at a time now, they're backing down the old pentagram. You see, the old pentagram get a little bit scared. Get a little bit scared. They say, oh, well, we never said that. And, you know, you can get about the blah, 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 that Christian can't do that. Well, let me ask you something. You did say it. And not only that, I've got an article right here. Air Force officer told to remove Bible from his desk. An Air Force spokesperson said personnel are not allowed to proselytize, but are free to express their personal religious beliefs, so long as it does not make others uncomfortable. Well, of course, any Muslim is going to be uncomfortable. Any Luciferian is going to be uncomfortable when you see a Bible laying on a desk because they can't stand to be within three foot of it. Or a picture of Jesus. Or if you say in the name of Jesus, you know, get thee behind me, Satan. They're going to have a lot of trouble with it. They're going to be uncomfortable. By the very definition, those people who are anathema, those people who are evil, those people who are workers of iniquity, will not abide and will not be comfortable around a Christian. So I say this to every Christian who's in the military. The time to do it is today. The time to do it is tomorrow, next week, whenever. But from here on out, you start talking to everybody you can about being a Christian and how great it is and how the Lord Jesus is your Savior and that there's power in the blood of Jesus and that in him you abide and that he abides in you and that because of that, you will do great and mighty things. And anybody who tells you you can't say it, you rebuke them in the name of the Lord Jesus. And if that means that everybody gets cashiered out of the military, then so be it. When you leave, take an F-15. When you leave, take an F-16. When you leave, drive your helicopter off. When you leave, take your tank. When you leave, take your APC. When you leave, take your up-ramp, in-ramp, bap ba bap bap E-I-E-I-O with you. And come on over to the side of the Lord and to the side of the American people. Get the uh, Babylon and out of the hands of these Babylonian scum who are telling you that you can't tell anybody about the Lord Jesus of the Lord or not. Stand by. Stand by. Technical difficulties. And you're a Christian. What do you think you get in prison? Not a doggone thing. And you now are being told that if you do say something and proselytize, that you are going to be put in the prison and court martial. You see, now they've had to come back against it because you have people such as, let's see here, a high-ranking Coast Guard official said at a National Day of Prayer that the religious liberty in the U.S. military is being threatened and that service members are being told to hide their faith in Christ, according to tape remarks obtained by Fox News. As one general so aptly put it, they expect us to check our religion in at the door. Don't bring that here. Rear Admiral William Lee told a National Day of Prayer gathering on Capitol Hill, leaders like myself are feeling the constraints of rules and regulation and guidance issued by lawyers that put us in a tighter 
a tighter box regarding our constitutional right to express our religious faith. The crowd of religious leaders and lawmakers cheered for nearly a minute when Lee vowed to defy any attempt to curtail religious liberty within the armed forces. There you go. There's the example. Rear Admiral William Lee, Rear Admiral William Lee, said that he vowed to defy any attempt to curtail religious liberty within the armed forces. That is the spirit that you need. If you're going to have them tell you to deny the Lord and to not talk about him and to hide it, or you don't get there, well, then you don't get promoted. You're not going to go. You're not going to get the fancy toy. You're not going to get this. But you tell them and you give them a resounding at the top of your lungs denial, and you defy them. Start wearing a cross around your neck if you don't have one. Get a cross and wear it. Put a cross on your helmet liner. You know, put it on, I mean, on your, uh, on your camo, on the outside of the helmet. If you've got, uh, you know, a regular, uh, Kevlar helmet, but you don't, you're not wearing a, uh, any kind of a cover on it, then, uh, take a chalk. Take chalk and make a sign of a cross on it. You've got those two cat's eyes on the back. Then you get you some paint and you make you a cross because I'll tell you what. The blood of Jesus is what's going to carry and save you. That's what it's going to be. And there's more examples. War game scenario at Fort Leavenworth that identified Christian groups and evangelical groups as being potential threats. The 2009 Department of Homeland Security Memorandum that identified future threats to national security coming from evangelicals and pro-life groups. Recently, we had them say, the Army say that Catholics and evangelicals are the terrorists, that they're the people that they're going to be afraid of. you darn right, because if you're working for Lucifer and you're working for the scum demons and their minions that are above you in the White House or in Congress or in the Department of Defense or the Department of EIEIO or whatever it is you're doing, you doggone right you got us to fear because we're going to come for you because, you see, you are workers of iniquity. You are those who bring and preach hell. You are those who are work evil on people. You are the iniquity workers. You are the chairs. And the Lord Jesus has angels that will know who every one of you is and where you're at and will search you out and will take you and throw you into the fiery furnace. But that don't mean in the meantime that somebody can't help the angels along a little bit. So if you want to come and you want to get froggy and you want to have Christians deny the Lord Jesus, you want them to deny God, you want them to work their evil and do all the things that you want them to do and not say a word and not say boo, well, buddy, you got another thing coming. And you cops and you DHS and you fiddle with boys internally, Department of Human Sacrifice, all oh, you scum. And I'm telling you, you think you're good. You think you're protecting a government. You think you're doing it because you're righteous. You are not. You are workers of iniquity. Get thee out of Babylon. If you are for the Lord Jesus, then do something and strike a blow on behalf of the Lord and not cave in to these Luciferian scumbags and joker touch who are usurpers in the first place and unconstitutional. And they're going to come and they're going to destroy the rights that are God-given rights that are enumerated in the Constitution and the Bill of Rights and the Declaration of Independence. Then I'm going to tell you what, everybody in the Air Force, you get a Bible and put it on your desk. You put a cross on the front of your locker. You put a cross on your helmet. You wear one around your neck. And then it's just time that all this stuff ends. It is time to let them know. It's time to let them know, and I will tell you again. And here's what it is. This is what Solzhenitsyn said again. And the reason I hit it again and again and again is because it is true and it's so needed to be heard. And how we burn in the camps later thinking, what would things have been like if every security operative, when he went out at night, to make an arrest had been uncertain. Yeah, uncertain. He had his career dissipation light blinking from the very time he got out to work his evil. 
uncertain whether he would return alive and had to say goodbye to his family, or if during periods of mass arrests, for example, in Leningrad, when they arrested a quarter of the entire city, and that was years ago, ladies and gentlemen, what could they do with helicopters now and, and machine guns and electronic weapons and all kind of stuff? But instead of simply sat there in the lairs, if they would have were paling with the terror at every bang of the downstairs door and every step on the staircase, but they had understood they had nothing left to lose and had boldly set up in the downstairs hall an ambush of a half a dozen people with axes, hammers, pokers, or whatever else was at hand. The organs would very quickly have suffered a shortage of officers and transport, notwithstanding all of Stalin's thirst for blood. The cursed machine would have ground to a halt if, if we didn't love freedom enough. And even more, we had no awareness of the real situation. We purely and simply deserved everything that happened afterward. Alexander I. Solzhenitsyn. Ladies and gentlemen, now is the time. If you are a good man, you are a good woman, to come to the aid of your country, but not to the aid of a government that is of the beast, for the beast, and by the beast, and is trying to tell you that you can't even honor the Lord Jesus or tell anybody about him, or they're going to throw you in jail? Well, I would tell you that perhaps it's time to then surveil them. It's time to then throw them in jail. It's time to charge them with unconstitutionality. It's time to charge them with crimes against the Constitution, with crimes against the Lord in heaven. When the stench of all the killing and all of the evils goes up there, then it is now time to turn the corner. Everybody in the military who is a Christian, you start telling everybody around you tomorrow or tonight or today or five minutes from now, you go ahead and tell them you're a Christian, by golly, and it's the greatest thing in the world to know that you're saved and that the blood of Jesus covers you. And that you would want that for everybody. And you put a Bible on your desk. You put a Bible in your rucksack. You put a Bible in your pocket. Put a cross on your helmet. Put a cross around your neck. Get a ring that has a cross on it. Whatever it is. And stop being a sissy. And back and down to this Luciferian scum that think they want to own you. It is not worth it. It is not worth it any kind of extra better duty assignment or a promotion or any of it. It's not worth it. What is worth it is that you believe in the Lord Jesus and that he's your Savior and that the promise of that is everlasting life. Not a thousand more bucks a month or a little bit better quarters. or a duty assignment, you know, at the golf course in Virginia or wherever it is. And if you get an order that's unconstitutional, which this in fact is, remove your Bible from the desk in the Air Force, you tell them to quit doing at the Air Force Academy. You tell them at the Air Force Academy to quit hypnotizing people and mind controlling them with demon and devil programming. That's done right there in the academy. And how do I know that? Because I know a man who had to drag his son out of it. We'll be back in a minute. With natural and man-made disasters and economic turmoil, if we don't get well prepared, we will most certainly regret it. Good readiness must include storage of high-quality food that will build us up rather than tear us down. Much of the storable food available is full of bad fats, salt, sugar, nutrient-poor refined foods, and even MSG. In response, EnerHealth Botanicals has created our 40-day and 40-night 100% organic preparedness pail. It's GMO-free and has a 10- to 20-year shelf life if stored at 60 degrees or less. 
Some of the items need cooking, some can be eaten dry, while some can be soaked and sprouted. These are selling out fast at third the price of storable food packages. Call us at 866-762-9238. That's 866-762-9238. Or go to enerfood.com, E-N-E-R-F-O-O-D.com. 866-762-9238. Or go to E-N-E-R-F-O-O-D.com. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. This is the Hawk that survived to thrive. It is Friday night, 5 3, 2013. And I will tell you what, if you would like to greatly extend your long term storage food, make sure you got the proper nutrition to keep up your immune system and everything and to keep going and slugging it out in the field at some point in time that you may find yourself at within it and at a moment's notice. Minute man. You know, that's why they said be ready to go in one moment. Have your rifle, your shots, your, your possibles bag and your food and everything, your boots ready to go. Because that's just how quickly it can come. It can come like a thief in the night. You get you all the inner food you can get because if you drink a shake or two a day, you'll get the nutrition you need and then therefore you can maybe extend your long-term storage food out your mountain house or your dehydrated or whatever, your open air, and that you can then maybe eat one or two meals a day instead of three. You know, just last longer. You have more for your children. You have more for your spouse. You have a little extra for the fighter that shows up at your doorstep that has been on the run for so long. And the reason I say that is because I'll tell you, every time I've dreamt for the last three, four years, sometimes when I dream, I'm dreaming that I'm with people that I don't know, but they seem to know who I am. And I'm in a basement or in a factory or some old warehouse somewhere or you know, somebody's garage or, you know, on the top of a rooftop or some kind of a deal, uh, an attic room. And then I hear the knock on the door and somebody says, Hawk, it's time to go. So I can see what my future might be like if those are prophetic dreams. I hope they are not. But in every single one, I'm on the run. And I'm on the run at all times. And I think. If that is going to be my lot, I thank all the people in the future who have put back extra to help people that may be on a time where we have to hide in the catacombs again. You see, but I'm telling you now to come on out and to march like Christian soldiers. And I guess I was cut off at about... Uh, at about uh, 21 minutes after the hour when I started to talk about the military rules against being a Christian. So therefore, I'm going to reemphasize that if you're in the military, put a Bible on your desk, particularly in the Air Force. Put a Bible on your desk. Put a cross around your neck. Put a cross on a ring. Put a put a lapel pin in. Put, uh, you know, a cross on your helmet with a piece of chalk, you know. Put it on the back. Put it on the front, wherever you want to do it. But you start telling everybody that you're a Christian, by golly, you're not going to do it, and you're going to defy any effort by the pentagram, scumbags, worship for the Luciferian, scoundrels that are going to deny people the right to talk about the Lord Jesus when they will provide prayer rubs and time for the Muslims. And is there any wonder that allegedly, upon election, that the Joker Tut received upon election or after election from the king of Saudi Arabia, allegedly, allegedly, allegedly received $1 billion, allegedly, in a Cayman Islands bank? Allegedly, is it any wonder when the Joker Tut According to KGB, sources allegedly was recruited as a teenager in Indonesia when he was a Muslim teenager 
named Barry Sotero, and his mother was a CIA agent or doubled as a Russian agent, CIA, and that they recruited him. And then upon election, they cheered and had dinners of celebration in St. Petersburg and Moscow, allegedly. And then one of the first trips after he went to Egypt and basically told him he was Tut, the Joker Tut, Then he went to Russia, and you remember the picture where he posed under the Illuminati eye with the gold Illuminati eye with all the the sun god-like symbolizing stuff coming out of the St. Petersburg Palace. Or right before the election this year, where he told Medvedev to tell Vlad, tell Vladimir that I'll have a lot more flexibility after the election to get rid of the nuclear uh, weapons uh, around Russia, the nuclear missile stand down. And then here you got an article today to where the Russians, oh boy, they're building all kinds of new nuclear weapons and nuclear missiles while the United States is standing down and decommissioning nukes while our carrier groups are sitting and languishing, many of them in port and are not being given the appropriate Maintenance because of sequestration. Or if you can't even get, you know, from here to there, yet at the same time, in the military, but at the same time, the Department of Human Sacrifice under the bull dyke Napolitano, who hates Christians, who hates veterans, and whose documents say that Disabled American veterans are the worst terrorists. And that Christians are terrorists. And if you love liberty and you love the Constitution, you talk about it. Or you like the Declaration of Independence, that you're a terrorist. Or if you voted for Ron Paul or Chuck Baldwin, you're a terrorist. Well, it's time to show them. It's time to tell them. It's time to stand up on your two hind legs and say, by golly, I'm a Christian. I believe in the Lord Jesus, and it's by the blood of Jesus that I stand right here. And that if that Constitution enumerated my right to freedom of religion to make no law that will there, you know, restrict that or any kind of a thing, then what is that you're doing by restricting my rights and telling me to ignore and deny my God and my Lord Jesus you got another thing coming. Now is the time, just like the Rear Admiral Lee said, to stand up, to stand up and defy the Pentagon and the DHS or the FBI or the EIEIO or the CIA, DIA, NSA, whoever it is, the president himself or old my boss Joe Biden, defy them and tell them that you ain't going to be moved, that you believe in the Lord Jesus, and that you also have the right to freedom of speech, freedom of religion, freedom of the press, freedom of assembly. You have the right to bear arms, and there should be not, none of that be infringed upon, and that those Second Amendment rights exist, not to hunt, not to protect your family at home. They don't exist for that. They exist to preclude and to prevent a governmental tyranny from coming down on us like King George had on us. And to that effect, you see in Kansas, in Kansas, they passed the law and then Governor Sam Brownbot signed it into law. It was SB 102 and it was signed into law last month. And it says basically that any act, law, treaty, order, rule, or regulation of the government of the United States which violates the Second Amendment to the Constitution of the United States is null, it's void, and unenforceable in the state of Kansas. And the bill also provides for criminal penalties against federal agents who attempt to enforce specific federal laws on guns manufactured in the state of Kansas and sold within the state. As the state takes the position under the new law that the federal government does not have interstate commerce authority over such items. 
But old Holder, in his letter, he didn't take too kindly to this law that the Tenth Amendment Kansans had to say here. And he says, I am purporting to override federal law to criminalize the official acts of federal officers. SB 102 directly conflicts with federal law and is therefore unconstitutional. And he says, under the Supremacy Clause, Kansas may not prevent federal employees and officials from carrying out their official responsibilities. And a state of certainly may uh, not criminalize the exercise of federal responsibilities because SB 102 conflicts with federal firearms laws and regulations, and federal law supersedes this new statute. All provisions of federal laws and their implementing regulations therefore continue to apply. But Kansas is not purporting. And, and let's talk about this. You got the Joker Tut now in Mexico saying that it's American guns that cause all the violence down there. Well, what about the scumbag evil drug lords and the narco-trafficante cartels that, in order to favor one of those who will give the cut all the way up the line through the CIA, Justice Department, FBI, Border Patrol, that the Chapo Guzman cartel, who you wanted to favor because that was the number one of the CIA boys and Poppy Bush's gang. I've been telling you about this for years, old Chapo Guzman's gang. You guys ran guns fast and furious, Eric Holder, and you are complicit. And because you, who are an accessory after the fact to the fast and furious gun running, because you signed off on it and knew about it, and then probably your boss did too, that quite frankly you're accessory after the fact to murder of federal agents along the border down there. And every federal agent in the Border Patrol knows that that's true. So you think you got away with all that, but now you're going to make say that you can't have this, that, the other. Well, let me tell you what. A constitutional sheriff elected in his county decides who operates in his county, and that supersedes anything you've got going. And if you don't think so, then you get your DHS, your Department of Human Sacrifice, and you get your stinking Russian Spetsnaz and your Russian paratroopers and your red Chinese flu, new bird flu, poison weapon makers, and you get your Singaporean Air Force and your Germany Luftwaffe, and you get your Danish Krullers, and you get your your uh, Dutch uh, Orange Boys, and you get them all up in a row, and you get your Blackwaters and your Z, and the Kraft, and all these, these guys, all these sons of bucks, and you get them up there, and I'm going to tell you what. The people of America, the United States, the Christian, strong, proud men and women will just do what the Declaration of Independence says. And that Declaration of Independence, one more time for you, Holder, because you've been challenged for a long time. And not only that, you were deputy when all the children were killed under Janet Reno at Waco. When you killed everybody down there, or most everybody when the little 39 babies in the bus, when you kept shooting ferret round after ferret round after ferret round in, and when people came out of the back door and you were shooting ferret rounds into the compound, you came out the back door and you had every sniper there shooting them dead in the head. So, Eric Holder, you're complicit in the death of all those children in Waco because you were deputy, were you not? And here's what the Declaration of Independence says, just so that you know, fast and furious, complicit type. But when a long train of abuses and usurpations pursuing invariably the same object evinces a design to reduce them under absolute despotism, it is their right, it is their duty to throw off such government and to provide new guards for their future security That's the Declaration of Independence. And all Kansas is doing, Holder, is telling you that you are violating the Second Amendment of the Constitution by infringing upon people's rights. And that you are in violation of the Constitution. And that you don't have supremacy over everything in every state. 
And the definition in Black's Law Dictionary of a state is a sovereign country. It is the united with a little u, big S. You go down and go over there to the Smithsonian or to the Library of Congress and look you up one of the original documents there, and you're going to see a little u, a big S, states or sovereign countries, and that's all there is to it. And you call about the supremacy clause, and meanwhile you're violating all kind of laws of constitutionality. So therefore, you're unconstitutional. You are a you're super, or usurper. You're the one who's pushing the NDAA and all of these things and the congressional people and whoever signed off on it are doing the same thing. So consequently, you want to get it on? You're out there again with your DHS. Dyke Napolitano is sending questionnaires to gun, uh, to uh, manufacturers of, uh, uh, of uh, ammunition again. They're giving them another round. They've already bought billions and have got that in production and going to them. And they're showing up at this gun store, that gun store, the other gun store, and taking the loads before they even hit the shelves in an attempt to get ready. And we have the DHS informant, Rosebud of Doug Hagman. We've had informants from Steve Quayle. Uh, I heard long ago from people that I knew that overheard a Canadian general say, when we come in America and we come to your house to house, do the cordon and search. If you ask us more than one question, it's going to be two bullets in the head. We're going to take your entire home and your children and your wife and do with, with them we want to. And you see now the Joker touch down in Mexico doing his thing down there. I told you last night. He's running for Mexico presidency or something. He's running to be the head honcho of the Union of North America, the UNA, or the NUA, or the UNA. And do you remember the Black Jack scenario in the London Sunday Telegraph art section, which you can still go and look it up. You can see the cartoon work, and you can see all about it. And I told you last night that the MH6 red with gray trim helicopter was over, um, you know, Cincinnati. And they said that they were already getting calls about it flying at treetop level and what was going on. And the guy comes over with authority and says, you have all been briefed about the event. Therefore, I don't care what you tell them. You can tell them they're all crazy or they're seeing little green men or whatever it is the guy said. I don't care. But you've all been briefed about the event. And the fact is that there was a terror drill at Muscatatuck training last year, last fall. And the drill scenario was the explosion of a nuclear device in the Cincinnati metropolitan area. And remember, we brought you stories about actual checkpoints on the bridge, the Indiana-Ohio uh, River bridges, and then about subsequent activities of Russian uh, military with helicopters landing at schools and such. In Butler County, where little Dickie Jones, little Dickie Jonesy, just loves him old Ruskies. He just loves that big money that the Department of Human Sacrifice gives to him so he can administer it. And then they loves it when he sends his deputies into churches because they have been adjudicated by some veterans organization as being crazy. So they have to get your guns confiscated. Old oh, little Dickie. If you live in Little Dickie's Butler County, or if you're next door in Warren County, or if you're in Hamilton County, or in Miami County, you better watch out because they drilled in Muscatatuck last fall a nuclear device going up, and it just happens to be that the flying pig road races and marathon and everything is happening there today, tomorrow, and Sunday in Cincinnati area, and then also right down the road in Old Louisville. What do we got? We've been running today the Pink Hats. We've been running the Phillies at Churchill Downs. You got the Kentucky Derby. You have a marvelous opportunity where you got all these millions of people within a, you know, 150, 200 mile radius right there. That wouldn't that be interesting? You know, if they could do that. And then at the same time, we have Israeli jets flying over the Lebanon today in the southern part near the, uh, uh, the farms area in the southern part of Lebanon, and we got them off the Med Coast, off of Beirut, and they're overflying. They're ready, and they should be ready to Israel because the Joker Tut 
is going to try to get them to jump. And all they need now is the pretext. And now we've got, you know, the new improved <coughs> mother of all penetrators or whatever the heck it is, the, the mop, the new bomb, whatever. Well, let me tell you something. They should have gone before they buried it all in the mountains. And you know it. And that's all there is to it. And you could have gone in there clandestinely and taken care of most of it. But instead, you didn't. If you want to stop the thing in Iran, then you target every one of the mullahs and you put a you put a TR-3B or a TR-4 above it. Let that sensors on those high-class sensors that are 100 years, 500 years ahead of the regular military sensors. You let their sensors detect them and maybe even pick up their brainwave pattern or their DNA or their scent. And you track them by their scent to where they go. And then you just take one of them, Almond Joy, or one of the billionaire mullahs, and you just zap them. Quit using all that stuff to zap Americans. Quit using all that stuff to come after people like me or, or the River Pirate or Steve Quayle or, or Greg Evenson. Quit using it on us. Use it on an enemy of the United States. Oh, but I forgot. I guess this president is just a not quite the strapping young Muslim socialist that he used to be. But this is the time of the quadruple cross and the pentacross. Steve came up with it the other day. I agree, Steve Quayle. He said, Hawk, I think they're going to be the pentacross, the five times. To stab people in the back five separate times and lie to everybody. And meanwhile, your tax dollars are funding the cleansing, ethnic cleansing of Christians in Aleppo, Syria. Two Orthodox bishops of Aleppo, Syria were kidnapped by U.S. supported Islamist fighters. Archbishop Yohannan Ibrahim and Greek Orthodox Metropolitan Boulos Yaziz were kidnapped as they were returning from an attempt to obtain the release of two priests previously kidnapped. The priest, Father Michael Kael, an Armenian Catholic, and Father Meher Mabus, a Greek Orthodox, were kidnapped in February and still remains in the hand of the Islamist fighters, the Western media referred to as the rebels, which in fact is Al-Qaeda, the same ones who killed the ambassador in Benghazi at the behest of the Luciferians in charge of the United States intelligence community and the United States government executive branch. Because that ambassador got to questioning why the United States is funding Al-Qaeda. But make no mistake about it, even Karzai said. And then Yaz yes, come out there bringing in bags of cash. He says, heck yeah, you're bringing in bags of cash. Ladies and gentlemen, they're bringing in millions of bucks every week. Why? To make sure the grease is there. So that the opium can come out of Afghanistan. The hashish can come out of Afghanistan. and make its way into American Europe so that the intelligence world, so the poppy bushes who run the Committee of 300, that's the 300 directors of the allegedly the British East Indies Stock Company in the city of London, the city. So you don't think it's time to get ready? Well, you better get ready. And if you have not read also the report, it's in uh, WashingtonsBlog.com, where former FBI translator and whistleblower, Sibyl Evans, has stated that within the three months after 9-11, that bin Laden, that's Osama or USA Ma, you remember when they changed the USA Ma, a.k.a. Tim Osmond, CIA agent? that bin Laden is number two man, Al-Qaeda Lieutenant Ayman al-Zawahiri, worked with the U.S. government for three months after the 9-11 to coordinate the destabilization in the Caucasus region, which is the old Soviet Caucasus region where Dagestan happens to be at, which is next door to Chechnya. And you see, isn't it interesting? that all of a sudden we got these guys who are Chechens 
from Dagestan that do a little bombing at the thing, or maybe they didn't do it. Or are they just the patsies? Maybe they're complicit. Maybe they're not. They made some bombs, so be it. But who are the guys in the tan BDUs with the black shirts, the black hats, and the black backpacks that the, you could not go in? And FBI, you said, and cops, that you could not go into the area and start to do a forensics immediately because there were too many of these black backpacks that were laying there and that some of them were exploded uh, in place. And then you remember also the explosion at the library, which nobody talks about, or why you had to get rid of the big hillbilly-looking boy. Because you couldn't pin it on the white, Christian, anti-Semitic, uh, uh, you know, Southern Poverty Law Center, uh, Pato Potok, uh, uh, Morris Slees uh, types, you know, that uh, uh, they say that it's all the disabled American veterans who are constitutionalists and Christians, you know, evangelical or Catholic, who are the big, you know, terrorists in league with Al-Qaeda. When and in fact it is you who are funding Al Qaeda from the U.S. government and the military and FBI, you want to investigate people, investigate those above you. Investigate your own president, investigate your own attorney general, investigate the head of the, of this agency, that agency and the other agency. But you better learn, you better quit coming for the American people. Cause just like you've got to understand, we're going to follow the Declaration of Independence. We're going to follow the Constitution. It's you guys who are on the wrong side of the law. It is you guys who are not law enforcement agents, but agents of chaos and of Lucifer. And so be it, you be warned. Good night to those old mighty men and women of valor, those people in the ultra black world who fly the TR-3Bs, the TR-4s, and bigger crap yet, who have the keys to the most sophisticated weapons on the planet, but who still believe in the power of the blood of Jesus. May you protect us from the alien pond scum coming in, and from those in the loose period camp, if the Lord will allow it, call the fire down on them tonight from your place, because they're surely blowing up oil uh, uh, fields in Denham Springs, Louisiana, setting fires in California, blowing stuff in fertilizer plants in Texas, Mobile Bay gas barges, on and on and on. And they're getting ready to blow the big one. And you guys know that that's also your duty. So find them and out them and put their head up on the pipe. Let us see them. And them old Fandango Rangers. God bless you wherever you're at. And the Mickey Lapua. Glad to have you back in the saddle, brother. Good night to you. Keep dialed in. Broadcasting.